Hello and welcome to the Taunton Dean and South Somerset Methodist Circuit Service. It is lovely to be here to worship with you. Our call to worship. Come to God and be ready to listen. Come to God and be willing to hear. Bring your gifts and your talents. Bring your hearts and your minds. Come and find a way to serve today. So let us pray. Generous God, we thank you for the good gifts we receive from you, for skills and abilities, for opportunities to serve. We ask for the gift of insight that we may know our gifts and recognize the potential in others. Amen. So we sing our first hymn today. Speak, O Lord, as we come to you to receive the food of your holy word. your spirit. It moulds us, teaches us, fills us. When we hear your word we realise what a great God we have, what a privilege it is to follow you. We want to learn so much more about you, to know you more intimately. As a caterpillar becomes a butterfly, so you enable us to become the person you want us to be, like you. Amen. We thank you, God, for all our experiences, painful or pleasant, that they make us as we are. May we allow them to be used for your glory. We thank you for our ministers who have responded to your call to share their gifts and experiences with us. Help us all to draw closer to each other and to you. In your name, Lord. Amen. The reading is John chapter 17, 
verses 6 to 19, and I'm using the J.B. Phillips translation. I have shown yourself to the men whom you gave me from the world. They were your men, and you gave them to me, and they have accepted your word. Now they realise that all that you have given me comes from you, and that every message that you gave me, I have given to them. They have accepted it all, and have come to know in their hearts that I did come from you. They are, they are convinced that you sent me. I am praying to you for them. I am not praying for the world, but for the men whom you gave me. For they are yours, everything that is mine is yours, and yours mine. And they have done me honour. Now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am returning to you. Holy Father, keep the men you gave me by your power, that they may be one as we are one. As long as I was with them, I kept them by the power that you gave me. I guarded them, and not one of them was destroyed, except the son of destruction, that the scripture might come true. And now I come to you, and I say these things in the world, that these men may find my joy completed in themselves. I have given them your word, and the word has, has hated them. For they are no more sons of the world than I am. I am not praying that you will take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are no more the sons of the world than I am. Make them holy by the truth, for your word is the truth. I have sent them to the world just as you sent me to the world, and I consecrate myself for their sakes, that they may be made holy by the truth. Thanks be to God for his word. Let's sing again. Our hymn is Being of Beings, God of Love. To you our hearts we raise, your all-sustaining power we prove, and gladly sing your praise. Oh, 
like to share with you a meditation based upon the reading that we have just heard from John, and it could possibly be from John's point of view. We were there in the upper room, just us and Jesus, the night drawing in, the end drawing near. We knew it, he knew it. There could be no doubt any more, not for any of us. No question of last minute reprieve. We'd seen Judas sneaking out, darkness in his eyes, and we knew it wouldn't be long before the vultures descended, hungry to devour their prey. We wanted him to run for it, back to Nazareth, back to Galilee, back to safety of the wilderness, anywhere but there in Jerusalem. But he wouldn't listen, of course, wouldn't even consider it, so we stayed with him, nervous, fearful, one eye over our shoulders, but determined to do our best for him. He was under no illusions. He knew full well what was coming, an ugly, agonising death. But it was getting to him, eating away inside. That much we could all see. When we broke bread, he was trembling, clearly petrified about what lay ahead. And as he shared the wine, there was a sob in his voice, a tear in his eye. Yet then he spoke, softly, gently, almost as if in a dream. And we realised that he was praying, not for himself, but for us. Not for his own life, but for the life of the world. Yes, I know it sounds hard to believe, but it's true. Honestly, I was there, remember? I heard him. It wasn't his death that was troubling him. It was the fear that we wouldn't stay together, that somehow we'd become divided, even end up fighting among ourselves. God knows why he thought it, but you could see how worried he was, how much our unity meant to him. It was his dying wish in a way, his last request, that we should stay together, one people, one faith, one God. I'm sure he needn't have worried, least of all at a time like that. All right, so we've had our differences since then, I admit it. But don't we don't always see things the same way. And maybe once in a while we may have fallen out. But honestly, I can't imagine anything major coming between us, can you? Not in the long run. After all, we're his disciples, aren't we? Each one of us, all called by him, all confessing the same Lord. And what could ever be more important than that? The reading is Acts chapter 1, verses 15 to 17 and 21 to 26. It was during this period that Peter stood up among the brothers. There were about 120 present at the time and said, My brothers, the prophecy of scripture given through the Holy Spirit by the lips of David concerning Judas was bound to come true. He was the man who acted as guide to those who arrested Jesus. Though he was one of our number, 
and he had a share in this ministry of ours. It becomes necessary then that whoever joins us must be someone who has been in our company during the whole time that the Lord Jesus lived his life with us. From the beginning when John baptised him until the day when he was taken up from us, this man must be an eyewitness with us to the resurrection of Jesus. Two men were put forward, Joseph, called Basabbas, who was also called Justus, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Thou Lord, who knowest the hearts of all men, show us which of these two thou hast chosen to accept that ministry of an apostle, which Judas, Judas forfeited to go where he belonged. Then they drew lots for these men, and the lot fell to Matthias, and thereafter he was considered equally an apostle with the eleven. Thanks be to God for his word. Let us pray. Lord God, sometimes we can be very preoccupied. We have our own agenda and our own concerns and we don't let your spirit get a look in. Forgive us, Lord. Open our hearts and minds to you. Lord God, sometimes we are just totally perplexed, confused, filled with doubt, and we limit you to our own poor understanding. Forgive us, Lord. Open our hearts and minds to you. Lord God, sometimes we try to limit the work of the Spirit in our lives. We hold back from going with the flow. We ban astonishment from our lives. Forgive us, Lord. Open our hearts and minds to you. Father God, you have given us eternal life in your precious Son, Jesus. Thank you for the assurance of your new life in us and the blessing of your love and compassion. Forgiving God, we come to you and you make us whole. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn is, Lord, you call us to your service, each in our own way, some to caring, loving, healing, some to preach or pray, some to work with quiet learning, truth discerning, day by day.
I'm reading a meditation based on the reading from Acts, and it's possibly from Matthias, this point of view. Did it go to my head, being an apostle like that? Yes, I think it possibly did. For a time, anyway. It was a rare honour, after all. The ultimate accolade. So undoubtedly, there was a certain swagger in my step. For those first few days, I'd hardly have been human if there hadn't been. But it didn't last long, for I soon came to realise that if I had my role, others had theirs. Just as important, just as necessary to the work of the kingdom. It wasn't a question of us and them, the select few lording it over the many. We were part of a team, each with our own gifts to contribute, our own strengths and our own weaknesses, each depending on the other as Christ depends on us. We did try putting labels on people for a time, it's true. Deacons, teachers, prophets, apostles, but it didn't work. For though the ministries were real enough, the spirit couldn't be tied down to them, neatly pigeonholed for our, converse, our convenience. He was working through all irrespective of our boundaries, now here, now there, each day new surprises forcing us to think again, new evidence of his power, compelling us to take stock and broaden our horizons. It was true for me as much as anyone, perhaps more than most, for well, I had imagined that day when the lot fell on me that I was someone special, my name destined to go down in history alongside the greats. But the truth was soon to dawn that through Christ time had changed. We were all special, every one of us all called to share in his ministry, to continue his work. A priesthood of believers, a company of saints, the body of Christ. I wasn't to be a star after all, but it didn't matter. How long, how could it? So long as Christ had proclaimed it, and his love made known. What counted then as now is that I did my bit and that you do yours. Let us pray. Let us pray together to our Heavenly Father, knowing his love for us. Father, we want to live your way and do your will, offer you true worship, and serve one another in love. Empower your church to do this, we pray. Live in us, transform us. Lord, we wait on you. Fill us, Holy Spirit of God. Father, we want our states and kingdoms to display your love and truth, justice and mercy. We want to break down walls of prejudice and build bridges of reconciliation and trust. Empower your world, Lord, we pray. Live in us, transform us. Lord, we wait on you. Fill us, Holy Spirit of God. Father, we want our children to be safely and lovingly nurtured, our elderly valued, our homes to be places of welcome and warmth. 
Empower your people, we pray. Live in us and transform us. Lord, we wait on you. Fill us, Holy Spirit of God. Father, we want your healing for those whose lives are aching and weary, your comfort and reassurance for all who are imprisoned by fears and hate. Empower these lives, we pray. Live in us, transform us. Lord, we wait on you. Fill us, Holy Spirit of God. Father, we want to commit our loved ones who have died into your safekeeping forever. Prepare us all, Father, to live with you in heaven. Lord, we wait on you. Fill us, Holy Spirit of God. Father, we want to worship and praise you with our voices and our lives. Shape us to your purpose and use us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The two readings from today's service show that prayer is an important factor in any decision that we make in life. To pray and place into God's hands the life-changing decisions to the everyday decisions, no matter when or where we are. In John's reading, Jesus is praying for his disciples, who he considers a gift to him from his Father. The disciples must continue to live in the world without Jesus, and he prays that they remain one people, one faith, one God. As Jesus' Father sent him out into the world, then the disciples have a mission to go out into the world. A little like fledglings leaving the nest without their mother. In the Acts reading, even though they cast lots as a vote for the twelfth disciple, they prayed for guidance beforehand. None of the twelve were identical. They all had their own gifts to offer. This is the same with us all. We all have different gifts to offer, different strengths and weaknesses, but we all complement each other, and as Christians with one aim in mind, to work for the glory of God in the service of the kingdom. Let us pray. Lord, it is easy to overvalue our gifts and equally easy to undervalue them. To have too high or too low an opinion of ourselves. Help us to recognise that you value us all equally, each having something to contribute to others and something to receive from them. Teach us then to appreciate our worth and to recognise that of those around us. And so may we learn to use the various gifts that you have given wisely and with humility in the service of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
and we sing our final hymn together. Lord, your church on earth is seeking your renewal from above. bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face to you and give you peace. Amen.